Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Fear the Common Core No More. Today's topic is double digit addition without regrouping. You are in the right place to learn some strategies that your child might have learned in the classroom so you can help them with their homework or just help them understand double digit addition. Before we get started, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a new upload. Let's get to it. The first strategy I want to share with you is expanded form. What expanded form is, is basically taking the double digit equation and breaking it into groups of tens and ones. So for example, if I have the equation 63 plus 21, I would break 63 into its group of tens and ones, which would make it 60 plus three. If I took 21, the 21 would be broken down into 20 plus one. From here, I would take the two numbers that were broken into tens, 60 and 20, and I would add those two together to get 80. Then I would take the two numbers that are the ones, and I would add those together. So three plus one equals four. From here, I would take the 80 and add it to the four to get the answer of 84. This is a great way for students to break apart tens and ones and to understand place value. Also a really great way to do mental math when there is no regrouping involved. The next strategy is called the base 10 strategy. Now this one stems from using base 10 blocks, which you might remember from being in school yourself. You would get these little packets of cubes and there would be single cubes to represent ones. Then there would be towers of 10 and then a flat 100. Those are base 10 blocks. What this strategy does is it makes a symbolic representation of base 10 blocks that your child can draw in order to solve double digit equations. So in the key I have here, you can see that a single line is equal to one group of 10 and a single dot is equal to one. What your child would do if using this strategy is they would draw out 63 plus 21 and they would do six straight lines and three dots to show 63. Then they would add two lines and one dot to represent 21. In the end, they would count up all of the lines and all of the dots, and they would get the answer of eight tens or eight lines and four dots or four ones, which is 84. This next strategy is using a hundreds chart to solve double digit equations. This one I used a lot when I taught first grade. It was a very good visual representation of numbers for my students. And once they understood that as you go down the chart, you add 10, and when you go across, you add one, a lot of them really gravitated towards using this strategy when we were doing double digit equations. Taking that 63 plus 21 again, you would start your child at 63 and ask them how many tens are in 21. Hopefully they would answer that there are two, so you would say, well, how many times do you need to hop down to show 20? And they would need to hop down two times to show 10 plus 10, which is 20. Then you would say, well, how many ones are in 21? There's only one, so they would only hop over one square, and they would arrive at 84. Again, this one only works if your child understands how to use a hundreds chart, which does take some time to practice, but once they get it, it makes math a lot more manageable and a lot easier for them. So I highly encourage getting a hundreds chart and using this strategy at home. The last strategy I'm going to give to you is called the number line strategy. This is probably one of the more abstract of all of the strategies because your child actually has to create their own number line to solve the problem. They have to use their understanding of place value in order to know how to break these numbers down into tens and ones. They need to know how many times they need to hop on the number line. So it is a little bit more advanced, which is why I put it at the end. So taking that equation, 63 plus 21, again, you would have your child start with the larger number. So start with 63 and put that on the end of the number line. Then you would ask them how many tens are in 21. And again, hopefully they would say two. So you would break that equation into 
21 equals 10 plus 10 plus 1. From there, you would have your child draw out a line to show a section of 10 that they would be adding to 63. Then you would say, well, how much is 63 plus 10? And hopefully they would know that on that next line they would need to write 73. Now they need to add their next group of 10, so they would add 10, and on that next line, hopefully they would know that would be 83. Then you would say, well, you only have to add one more, what's 83 plus one, and they would arrive at 84 at the end of their number line. So those are the four strategies for double digit addition I have for you. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and share it with a friend who might find it useful. You can always connect with me on social media at Walk Away From The Workbook on Facebook and Instagram, or you could email me directly with any questions you have at walkawayfromtheworkbook at gmail.com. Until next time, have fun learning with your little ones. Bye.